before you tackle the next assignment, Cricket, which you're going to submit for marking, I'd like to take you through the Group Profit and Loss account. Question one is a pre-populated spreadsheet. Can be a cash flow. We'll look at that later. Most probably will be a statement of financial position, but it could also be a Group Profit and Loss account. And ignoring the theory, ignoring the explanations, concentrating on the pre-populated spreadsheet, we've got here a working example, not an exam question, but a working example where we're using a pre-populated spreadsheet and we are adjusting yeah, the consolidated profit and loss account and OCI for the group. So over here, we've got the PL already prepared and we can insert our adjustments here. And then we've got three bits of information, trading, depreciation, and again in OCI. Now, this following information has yet to be considered and should be used to correct the draft accounts. Let's do things one at a time. If you want a moment to pause the video so you can read the question, take advantage of the opportunity of pausing the video. Trading. During the accounting period, the parents sold goods to the sub for 8 million. So there is intercompany trading. So far as I am concerned, that means the information, that means we have to eliminate both the intercompany sale, because if the parent has, yeah, made a sale, we've got to reduce the group revenue. But equally, it means the sub has made a purchase. Because if the parent has sold to the sub, then the subsidiary has bought from the parent. So we would have there a number which would be 90,000 in the final column. Now, in order to reduce the cost of sales, in order to eliminate the cost of sales, I'm showing that 8,000 as a plus, And therefore, that would effectively reduce the cost of sales to minus 46. So we have put the consolidation adjustment in there. And I notice that although I was given the figures in millions, it's actually thousands in the spreadsheet. So I operate in terms of the numbers in the spreadsheet. If you put in the wrong sign, plus or minus sign, or if you put in only eight instead of 8,000, you won't get any marks. These goods are cost the parent five. Therefore, the parent effectively has made a profit of three million on that sale. And if all the goods remain unsold, if all the goods remain unsold, I would be then making a further adjustment to the cost of sales, increasing the cost of sales by three million. Yeah, with the pup. If the goods had remained unsold, because if the goods had remained unsold, the profit was unrealized, I would need to increase my costs and therefore I would be reducing my profits. That would be the correct thing to do. And because the parent is the seller, there will be no charge to the NCI. But all the goods have been sold on by the sub. So none remain in closing stock. So what I've done here is unnecessary. What I've done here is incorrect. And I am removing that. This is because of the trading. This is because of the trading. So we're going to show it as a separate heading. I have therefore done the trading item. I have explained what is going on to you. And in an exam context, you may have to write about the single entity concept, why you're eliminating the intercompany sale and the intercompany purchase. Depreciation. At the beginning of the year, there's an 80% sub. There's a fair value adjustment of 20 million and it has a life of 10 years. Therefore, there's an additional depreciation of 2 million that needs to be adjusted for in the PL. 
Obviously, if we were doing the balance sheet, the 20 million would affect the PPE. Yeah, but that's we haven't got the balance sheet. So we've got the additional depreciation of 2 million. That's an additional expense. So we've got here the depreciation. 2 million because it's one tenth of 20 million. And this is, to my mind, an additional cost of sale because it's a factory item. Yeah, it's machinery, so it's part of the cost of sales. And I'm putting in there an additional depreciation of two. I haven't finished. This depreciation expense doesn't relate to the parents' books. It relates to the subsidiaries company's books. And to that extent, we need to split that with the non-controlling interest. They're going to suffer pain as well. And you can see further down here, when you get to the bottom after OCI, the profit attributable here is 8,000, is 9,000, is split eight and one. Now this is an 80% subsidiary. So the owners are going to take a hit of 1,600 and the NCI are going to take a hit of 400 being 20% of the 2,000. We are reducing the profit. It's not particularly helpful to think too much in debit and credit terms because although we have debited the cost of sales to increase the cost of sales, the credit is on the balance sheet and therefore you're not seeing the other half. And this 1600, 400 is a split. And actually, not only does it affect the profit for the year, but it will also go on to have effect on the total comprehensive income as well. All right. So we need to drop those numbers in. And we are dropping those numbers in. Where the adjustment reflects the parent's profits, there's no impact on the NCI. But where we're affecting the subsidiary's profits, it does affect the NCI. Remember, like the balance sheet, there's a full consolidation. So we're adjusting for the full depreciation here in the P&L. And then underneath at the bottom, we show the split with the NCI. Now, that's consistent with the way that we account for uh, assets and liabilities of the sub on the balance sheet, group balance sheet in full. And therefore, we have the income and expenses in full. And then we show the NCI. Two down. One to go. This time we've got a 60% sub recognizing again in equity that will not be reclassified. So perhaps in the post acquisition period, the sub has revalued its PPE in the post acquisition period. I don't know, it doesn't matter. We are we have here a five million gain that has not been recorded. So in OCI, this will not be reclassified. So we've got here the 5,000 going in there. Yeah, I say 5,000 because it is 5 million. And the numbers we are dealing with here are all, yeah, already in thousands. So we can just do that. And this is about the gain. So we've got an extra gain of 5 million overall. If it related to the parent company, end of. But in fact, it relates to the subsidiary and therefore 40% of that gain is attributable to the NCI. 40% of 5 million is 2 million. And therefore, we've got here 3 million going on as well. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with 60% of five being three. I'm comfortable in splitting that in reporting that gain gross, reporting that gain in full in OCI in the place where it should be. A gain that will not be reclassified to P&L. And I'm then comfortable splitting it with the NCI in this manner.
in the exam. That's it. In the exam, move on. In the exam, get a life. In the exam, six out of six. In the exam, you do not get any marks for the total column. So I feel a bit of a massive hypocrite because I have actually prepared that final column for you just to enable you to pause and have a look. OK, so we love the group balance sheet. We should also love the group profit and loss account. The group profit and loss account is dealing with income and expenses. And yes, it does deal with NCI at the bottom. I am looking forward to marking your attempt at the next assignment of cricket. Enjoy.